Alright everyone, hey welcome to this tutorial video, this isn't my usual content, but if you if you watch any of my videos you'll see that I pre recently got the Razer Chroma keyboard and mouse, that sort of thing, and if I don't remember if I showed it or not in any previous videos, but there's an application called Keyboard Visualizer, which visualizes audio levels, so if you're playing music it'll do like the audio levels on your keyboard and mouse and stuff, it's really cool. Um, the thing is, what I wanted to do is I wanted a, a button on my keyboard, like a macro button, I could just hit to turn it on and hit to turn it off with my custom settings for it. So I made a script to do that and a few people have been asking for a video tutorial. I put the script on the Razer forums and uh, so I'm going to make a video tutorial. So if you don't have the keyboard visualizer, which if you're watching this now you probably do have it, um, so I won't bother making a video demonstrating that, but um, what you can do is, depending on where you've saved it, like like I have mine saved on my desktop, but what we're going to do for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm going to I'm going to save it into a folder um, with the the script we're going to download just to make it easier for you. So the first thing to do is you want to click here on this this oops, you want to click on this link here in step one. Uh, to go to GitHub just to download the zip for it. So you can see this is the script, so you can pretty much read it over here if you wanted to. But basically you just want to click here to download the zip. And then that will, uh, when that downloads we're going to open it. So basically just want to open the zip file. And you want to open this folder with a weird name. And then here's the script itself, okay. So you want to, depending on if, if you have like WinRAR or 7-zip, or zip 7 zip, I think that's what it's called. Um, you can, you it might open with that. I have WinRAR, but I just have it zip files open with Windows Explorer. So you basically just want to extract it out of the zip folder and into, um, like I said, I have mine saved on my desktop, but for the purposes of this demonstration, we're going to make a specific folder and put the stuff in it that we need just so it's clearer. So I'm just here in my C drive. I'm going to go and make a folder, I'm going to call it Chroma, and then inside this folder uh, you're just going to extract, this is where you want to extract the script to, or just like I just did paste it, you can just copy and paste it, drag it over, whatever works for you, however you like to do that. Um, doesn't matter where you save it, just as long as you save it somewhere, that's somewhere that's, somewhere that you, is, is not a temporary folder, so make sure you do save it somewhere. So as you can see, I've also just copied in here this keyboard, the keyboard visualizer software. And I mean, if I just open this up, this is just your standard keyboard visualizer interface. You've got all your settings and values, um, but obviously, like this, it's no fun. So this is why we want to make the macro, the macro key, so that we can just open it instantly, have all our values there, and and hit it again to close it. So this is a script that will achieve this for, it will achieve that for us. Now you don't want to open it like this, you don't want to just double click to open it, you want to right click and you want to hit edit, or I have notepad++ plus plus, so I'm going to hit edit with notepad++ plus plus here. And um, this is the script, so the first thing, so there is a lot here, a lot of this down here is code, but we're going to look at the configuration section. Um, so the first thing is, like what I've done, I've got the keyboard visualizer application in this C chroma folder as you can see here let's see see there um, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna if you've got it in a folder like this I'm just gonna click here so I can see the actual path I'm gonna right click hit copy and then back on the script inside these double braces here so like inside here you want to just paste it inside there and you make sure just to make just make sure there's an extra backslash on the end there, otherwise you're going to have problems like it'll run and it'll come up with an error, so just make sure you have that. If you have it like me saved onto your desktop, you don't actually need this in here, so we could just take this out, and we could just come in here and uh, take out this, um, we could just come in here and take out the uh, this little apostrophe here. Just delete that, and the, if you've got it on your desktop, that's all you need to do. You don't need to do anything else. You don't need to put a path in or anything. But um, since we have it in a folder, we're just going to do it like that. 
Um, now if you did want to utilize this, but say you had it in your documents folder, you could come up here and change that to documents. In fact, you can change that to any any system shell folder, but um, for the purposes of this, we're just going to... If you know what you're doing, go ahead, change that, but otherwise, just keep it simple. So down here, we're looking at the str app name, and this is basically keyboardvisualizer.exe. Now, in regards to this, when you download it, this is the name it is. If you haven't changed this, like if you didn't rename it at all, this is fine, just leave it like this. Um, if you did rename it, just put in the name and make sure you do have the .exe. Okay, make sure that's there, otherwise it, it will fail to open. And the last bit you want to configure is the str args down here. Um, and the first thing here, start minimized. So this means when keyboard visualizer opens, it will it will start minimized. Um, the other thing is you've got these other args. These are the default ones I've put in. Um, now the thing with these, if you download the one that's linked on the Razor forums, the the script itself will work. It's just none of these args will work because the one that's linked in the forum post. So the download link here in this forum post, um, the download link here is actually uh, is is for a slightly older version. I have um, the problem is there there is newer versions further down. You would have to go look for them. But the problem is they for some reason they do have a they do have malware in them. So I I went to GitHub and I downloaded the source and I actually built Keyboard Visualizer like I I compiled the source myself um, because that way it didn't have a Trojan in, embedded in the download that was linked in this post somewhere. Um, I might upload that and put a link in the description of this video and maybe put a link in the forum post uh, if people want that because um, nobody likes Trojans. So, But assuming you do have the latest version, which is that you need the minimum version is 1.0.9 of Keyboard Visualizer. Um, you can customize these args and you can see I've also linked here this link. You can go to that and you can see in this post here is where um, Calc Programmer 1 who explains um, sorry, who is the, the programmer that made made this great program, um, explains here, and this is actually has the download link, but last time I checked, that actually had malware in it, so like I said, I'll, I'll probably link one that is clean, that I, that I um, compiled myself. But um, anyway, so you can see in this code block, this is the, this is, this is how this works. So you can see here, you've got the different arguments. So you've got amplitude, 100, background brightness, blah, 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 all these things. These are the default ones I use. Um, and you can see you've got, the way you want to construct this is argument. So you've got your arguments. So these are all your arguments, like amplitude, background brightness, match your argument, then equals, and then the value, okay? Now for most of these, like for example, amplitude, I have it here as 100, background brightness 20. For things like, um, for these, for the background, for the background mode, um, you're gonna, you can set the value, so you do like bkgd underscore mode equals, and then w the value that you want, depending on what you want. And one thing I found helps is if you have Keyboard Visualizer open here, what you can actually do is you can set this, you can play around the settings till you find what you want, and then you can just apply those custom settings to the arguments. I mean, if you do, if anyone really does need help with this, like set your set what you want in Keyboard Visualizer, take a screenshot of it, and I can just, or someone else can can just construct this argument string if you can't, if you're not able to figure it out. But um, it is pretty straightforward. So if you play around with it, you'll probably figure it out. So don't worry too much about it. Um, and again, so once you've done that, <laughs> you're done configuring, yay. Um, yeah, don't worry about any of this down here. This is what actually, this is the code that makes it work. So don't don't play around with that unless you want to break it, in which case you need to download it again. So, All right, so we're just going to save this. I didn't um, actually change anything except for the path. But we'll save it and we'll close it. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is in Synapse, um, I, I bind these to my macro keys. I have actually multiple copies of the script on my desktop just with different parameters and arguments that I want. Um, I might make a version one day where you can have multiple arguments, but uh, I, I can't be bothered right now to be fair. <laughs> so um, I just have multiple copies of the script lying around. 
for um, each kind of setting that I want. So I'm going to use the M4 key. Um, so you can use any key or like, you know, you could bind a mouse button to it, for example. Like uh, you could bind one of the mouse buttons or um, whatever you have, if you have that one that has like the, the 21 macro buttons, that little device, that's pretty cool. Um, but anyway, I'm going to click on here, click on the M4 key, and uh, you want to come up here where it says default, just drop it down, and you want to launch program, okay? So what you want to do is then click on here, and you're going to navigate to where where you downloaded the keyboard visualizer script just earlier in this video. For me, this was a C drive and in Chroma was a folder and inside here is where I've got the keyboard visualizer in the script. Um, and what you just you just want to do is you make sure you select the script and not the application. So the one ending dot VBS, select it, hit open, and it'll pop in here. So again make sure it does say dot VBS, not dot exe. If you've got dot exe you've got the wrong one. You want the dot VBS, okay? So hit save and then that's it done. So that's you, like I said, that's it done, that's all you need to do. Um, what you, the only other thing now is if we hit this M2, sorry, if we hit M4, which is a key we programmed, you'll see it pops up, the, the keyboard, the mouse and stuff changes. Um, and I'm going to just play some music here through my headphones. And you can see the light effect happening on the keyboard like that. So that is all you need to do to get it to work. So you can you hit the macro key to turn it on. And then once you want to turn it off, again just hit your macro key. And it will stop. It's as simple as that once you've got it programmed. Um, the other thing is, like I said, I have pretty much now all of these macro keys bind to different ones. So, um, like this one is a really dark version, and uh, this one up here is one that does. Uh, like you can see, it's it's using a different lighting effect like that. And uh, you can actually, like if you have multiple ones, you don't need to. The funny thing is, like if I I hit this one to start this effect, I could hit this one down here. And it'll close because the way the program works, you can hit any of. Well, you can if you have, like I said, if you have multiple ones, like say you have M1, 2, and 3 bound to different versions of the keyboard visualizer script, you could hit any three of those and it would stop the script, that, or it would stop keyboard visualizer. So it's quite nice that way. You don't have to hit the same one that you started from. So it also it doesn't switch like if you're like me if you start on this effect and then you wanted to change I want to change that one I do have to hit it twice but that's just that's again that's the way it works but the the way I've programmed it is specifically designed to the the probably the best way it works All right thanks for watching so if you like this video um and if you found it helpful like these guys uh, found the script helpful. Uh, be sure to just uh, let me know, give it a like, and if you do want to, if you've never seen any of my content before, uh, please feel free to check out my channel. I do weekly vlogs of my life and cool things that happen, so yeah, uh, thanks for watching. Um, if you do have any questions or queries, just feel free to leave them in the comments of the video below, or you can leave them on the in the thread, and I'll try and, me or someone else will try and uh, give you a hand. Thanks for watching.